and welcome to the end. Well, actually the beginning of the end. This is the last video in this composition tip series and this is number six of six. So the uh, I will link to the uh, rest of the videos up here. You can take a look at those uh, other composition tips video. This video is all about interesting photos. In order to talk about that, I have to back up a little bit and explain some things and then talk about why and how I came up with this idea, this framework. I wanted to find a way to talk about composing and critiquing photos that covers both the uh, uh, emotional parts of our reaction to photos as well as the technical reactions we have to photos. So to cover uh, focus and story and uh, those other important elements that we react to when we see photos. And I needed to come up with a way that was easy to talk about, easy to uh, repeat, and uh, easy to explain. So the framework I came up with is called I base it around interesting photos, the concept of that, and uh, trying to understand what that means, how to use it, and uh, how to evaluate it as we look at photos. So let's back up just a little bit and talk about the what the word interesting means. Interesting means, in the dictionary definition, something that holds the attention. So I think that's a good place to start because we don't need to talk about uh, is it a good photo? Is it a bad photo? I like this photo. I don't like this photo. It's it's a it's a relatively objective way to say yes, this photo made me stop and look at it. It held my attention. Now you may not like it or you may really like it, but that doesn't matter in this framework. Talking about interesting photos removes some of the emotional um, baggage and judgment we might have and lets us be a little more objective. So once we have the concept of holding the attention, what is that all about? How can we digest that and make that a little even smaller package? So then we go to holding the attention. How do we hold someone's attention? How do you get noticed? You have something that's unique, something that's rare, or something that's different. So using those three simple words to talk about ways you hold attention. Is it unique? Is it rare? Is it different? Have I seen it before? Or have I seen it before but not this way? Uh, is it something that doesn't happen very often? That gets your attention. Is it one of a kind? That'll get your attention as well. So. That's the beginning of the framework to talk about interesting photos, both how we create them, how we compose them, and how we can critique them to discuss why it works or why it doesn't work. Every photo has the same four basic ingredients, same four building blocks. Uh, every photographer, every camera uses these same exact elements to create the image. So here they are. The first one, what do you think it is? It's the subject. So we take the subject and what do we add next? We add light. And then what do we add after that? We add the composition, how we arrange the elements that are in the frame and where we put the camera to do that. And the fourth building block of every photo is some kind of processing, some way to maybe crop it at least, or alter colors, alter tones, alter textures, um, do some more uh, drastic things in Photoshop. So when you do combine all those things and each of those four elements has enough interest, then the result of those building blocks is an interesting photo. So here's the basic framework. An interesting photo is created when the, the building blocks, the subject, light, composition, and processing, have enough interest in them, and the interest is, again, unique, rare, and different, when there's something unique going on in them that then uh, combined creates an interesting photo. So for the sake of the next part of the conversation, I'm gonna leave out processing. Uh, while that's a very important part of, uh, I believe it's a very important part of creating interesting photos, it's 
not what we deal with mostly when we're in the camera. So we'll save that for a separate conversation. But for right now, let's just focus, pardon the photography fun pun, on subject, light, and composition. So as you're creating the photo, those are the things you are working with that are right in front of you that you can use as your building blocks for creating interesting images. So here's how I approach creating photos. What, where, whatever I'm looking at, I'm in the back of my mind looking and evaluating the level of uniqueness, rareness, and difference, because that's how we hold attention, of the subject light, and then that'll determine in part what I need to do with composition. So here's what I mean. Um, when you're looking at an image, how ordinary is the subject? If the subject is pretty ordinary, then you need to bring more interest either in the light or the composition or both of them, okay? It might be easier if I show you what I mean. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I composed and created this image considering subject light and composition and then we'll evaluate the interest in each of those individual building blocks. So starting off, as I'm looking at the subject, I think this is an interesting subject. Uh, this is in London, uh, and this is showing the, the skyscraper called the Shard, as well as London City Hall in the lower left corner. And um, I can't remember the name of the boat, um, the, the big naval ship there uh, on the Thames River uh, at sunset. So the whole subject, everything you're looking at, I think is pretty interesting. So as you're looking at this image, I believe the subject creates a fair bit of interest. Um, it's something relatively unique, something rare, and something different in that uh, there's no skyline just like this. So that brings some interest. Next, let's look at the light. How interesting is the light? And I think it's pretty interesting because it's bringing um, that sunset uh, time. We've got some interesting clouds in the sky, so uh, there is a, a fair bit of interest uh, created by the light itself. And then last, we have the composition. And the composition is doing a fair bit of work here as well. Here's why. Um, this camera position is uh, about three quarter, well, about a quarter of the way uh, down um, on uh, the Tower Bridge. So I'm actually standing in the middle of the Thames River on a bridge. Um, not my favorite thing to do. I don't like bridges, but uh, for the photo, I will do it. Uh, so the composition, uh, that's one part of the composition that creates interest. The other part of the composition that creates interest is the positioning so that I, I'm standing in a spot where the sun is intersecting the edge of the, the shard. And therefore, uh, with the uh, smaller aperture opening, creating that sun star effect. So, in my opinion and my experience, this is kind of the um, unicorn of photos where subject, light, and composition all carry about equal amounts of interest, of uniqueness, rareness, and difference. Uh, you're doing something beyond the ordinary with each of those three elements. And for my experience, that's kind of rare, where each of them is giving you a lot of interest to work with. Usually one is much more than the other. So let's talk about what that looks like next. So uh, this photo, uh, sunset in Sammamish, because it's sunset in Sammamish, is, um, let's talk about, so what do, you, what, what do you notice first as the most interesting thing in this image? You are correct if you said the light. Well, you're correct if you said something else too, because this is opinion. Uh, there is a subjective element to this. But to me in this photo, the most interesting thing, the thing that captured my attention the most was the light. Both the color, the timing, uh, and those clouds, the atmosphere, uh, all combine to create interesting light. Uh, so that is the main star of this show, is the light. And the light is the star because this kind of light doesn't happen very often. Uh, especially here in the Northwest, we don't get lots of these super colorful sunsets, uh, although they have been a little more common this past spring, uh, but, but we don't get them that often. So it creates uh, a uniqueness because it's relatively rare. 
The subject is, uh, again, here in the Northwest, we have lots of trees, so the especially a single tree is not all that interesting by itself. It becomes a little more interesting because of the light, the silhouette. Uh, it's frankly not all that an attractive tree, but I like it because it's got some character. Um, and then composition, um, again, I'm not doing much here. The camera's on a, I don't remember if it was on a tripod or if I was handheld here. But uh, I'm just at normal standing height, just again, framing that, just maybe adjusting up or down just a little bit to get that sun star effect with the sun intersecting with the, the top of the trees, okay? So the more you work at this, the more you will just kind of intuitively evaluate quickly subject light and composition and decide where you put your energy in creating the photo. We'll do another image here. What do you think is the most interesting uh, component? What's carrying the weight of interest in this photo? Subject in this one. The subject is carrying the weight of uniqueness, rareness, and difference. Now, the subject is in, um, two things here. It's both Mount Rainier and the ferry boat. Uh, individually, relatively common here in the Northwest, but uh, you don't get a lot of times where they line up like this. So that's what creates the uniqueness. The light, um, middle of the afternoon, um, on a blue sky day, I mean, it's lovely to be in, but not photographically that interesting because it's not unique, rare, or different. It's, again, great to be out on the water, but not so great from uh, creating photo interest. And then the composition, um, there's a bit of extra interest here because um, waiting for everything to line up, I'm standing in a certain spot on another ferry to uh, wait for looking down the car deck of the one that's approaching us. So um, there's a little work in composition here, but uh, again, the major amount of work here is being done by the subject. All right, one more photo. And this is what I find to be the most common thing I encounter in my photography, this type of a setup uh, of interest. So what do you think is creating the most interest in this photo? Subject, light, or composition? I think it's composition. Uh, again, um, what raindrops on tree leaves and branches, um, relatively common around here in the Northwest, especially well, it's only from November through May. Yeah, it's not that long. But uh, um, yeah, so it's pretty common. And it's something we walk by all the time. But this composition getting close to it, uh, eliminating background distractions, creating uh, something unique to look at with that single water drop creates more interest. So again, the subject, relatively ordinary around here, raindrops on a, on a tree branch and, and the light, Again, the time of year this was taken is pretty common, a cloudy, overcast day, but it makes this nice soft blanket of light, which is lovely for photography. Uh, so this is my most common way of creating images when I want to go out and say, I'm going to go create some photos right now. Because I don't need to wait for an interesting subject. I don't need to wait for light to be spectacular and the sunset to be just so. I can create this kind of image almost any time I want. So there's the framework for in, uh, of interesting photos as a way to, to look at what you're gonna create an image of, evaluate the building blocks of subject light and composition, and then use those to inform how you wanna create the image. Um, if the light's not good and your subject isn't great and you can't get an interesting composition, well then come back another day. Uh, repetition is often one of the um, least used composition to, uh, tools we have. Coming back another day when all the conditions create a more interesting way to create that photo. So I, I hope you found this whole series at least a little bit helpful. I hope this video was helpful. If you have some uh, suggestions or tips or other ways you like to use composition in creating photos, please leave a comment below. 
Uh, any suggestions about this video, I'd be glad to receive those as well. Uh, you know what's coming up next. I'm going to ask you to subscribe to this channel uh, as we continue conversations about composition. We'll also talk about uh, uh, gear stuff. We'll talk about Lightroom stuff, all those things that we use in making interesting photos. Uh, if you like this video, that'd be great too. If you could click on the like button, that helps train the YouTube algorithm about quality videos. So Thank you very much for doing that. I hope you've enjoyed this series. I look forward to creating more uh, stuff with and uh, with you. Uh, if you have, again, content ideas, uh, leave them below. And until we meet again in the next video, I will say goodbye for now and wish you well and good health and happy photography. Take care. <laughs>